When we think about all the content that's available on the internet, it's kind of interesting to break it down along two different axes. So think about dividing the internet content sort of into four quadrants. So one division is between uh, content that's freely available that you don't have to pay for and content that's non-free. So here's the free area, here's the non-free. And then the second division, which is equally interesting, is whether or not the person who created the content was paid in some way for creating that content. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they were paid by you. Um, so, you know, we have unpaid people that contribute to the internet and we have paid people that contribute to the internet. And so, so the unpaid free category, you know, free content that's created by people that don't expect to pay paid for it, I mean, that's a lot of what we find online, like a lot of stuff on YouTube, um, blogs, you know, personal blogs that are written by people, stuff that people post on Facebook, um, for example, a um, lot, of, lot of the content on YouTube, not all of it, but a lot of sort of the personal videos that people upload to YouTube. Okay, and this, so this is a pretty vibrant area. Um, down here in the non-free paid category, we also have a lot of things that we sort of recognize and understand. So, you know, uh, uh, online uh, newspapers that charge for content, so places like the Wall Street Journal, um, music that you have to pay for via something like iTunes or another service where I'm paying per track or per album, um, you know, streaming videos that I might um, need to pay money to watch, whatever. Um, and so, and so these, these parts of this um, breakdown are, are kind of maybe not the most interesting parts. The most interesting parts are these other categories. So, you know, non-free content paid by, you know, created by people who are not paid for it. So people who are putting content out there on the internet and trying to monetize it. So I might have a blog that tries me to encourage to sign up. Um, I might have music that's created by somebody who's trying to get a foothold in the industry that's putting it out there and asking you to pay for it. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly whether or not there's a huge amount in this category. Um, but one of the problems for the internet is that there's actually quite a bit in this other category. Free content created by people who are actually paid for it. And then the question sort of starts to become, what's the business model? So, for example, all of the online news that you can get without paying for it. And there's actually quite a bit of that out there, right? Um, you know, all, all the news that's out there, you know, I, I would even argue sort of like music subscription services like, um, you know, is, is Spotify free? Yeah, so Spotify, right? I mean, I can listen to these services like Spotify and I can hear music that is not free to create and the people that created it were paid by a record label or something like that. Um, but it's not clear exactly what the revenue model is. Maybe it has to do with ads. Maybe it has to do with trying to get you eventually to sign up for a subscription. Um, and so to some degree, the, the, the proliferation of stuff that falls into this category is one of the ways that the internet is, is sort of challenging some of the typical creation and distribution channels that existed for a long time, right? You know, the idea that, um, so, so here's another example of this stuff. Uh, a lot of the open source software. You know, there's certainly lots of people that create open source software uh, that sort of, there's a lot of open source software that also falls into this category that's just created by hobbyists. But there are actual people, software developers that work at legitimate companies that are writing code and sharing it with the open source community. So those people are paid, uh, but the revenue model that they're paid by doesn't necessarily mean that they're still not allowed to contribute software to this community and make it available to people for free. So obviously, you know, again, I mean, this category is one of the more interesting areas where we're seeing um, the, we're seeing a challenge here, which is how do we ensure that we get high quality content for people who deserve to be paid for their efforts, um, and yet still leverage this ability that the internet has, has provided us with to share that content in a global way, to make that content uh, uh, sort of universally available. Because for something like news, for example, you can argue that there's a big cultural benefit in having a lot of free, accurate information available online. Uh, people can find out what's going on in the world, and that sort of imp might improve sort of society and the world at large in a way that justifies not charging for it. Um, but then the question is, how do we make sure that we can still pay the people who are creating this high quality free content?